Good morning, it's Roger Gilbert here and I'm in the Rongo Rongo Live video studio uh, reporting on behalf of Milling and Grain this morning. It's my pleasure to have in the studio this morning Martin Schlowry. Now many of us know Martin of course and uh, he doesn't really need an introduction but just for those who aren't familiar with him uh, I will give you a brief overview of the importance Mar uh, Martin has uh, made to the industry, the milling industry, over the past 40 years or so. Uh, he joined uh, Bula, well first of all he did an apprenticeship in milling and ended up uh, working in Nigeria as a, a miller and uh, then he joined in 1980 the Bula group and uh, he became a milling technologist uh, through attending the uh, Swiss School of Milling. After completing uh, assignments of uh, commissioning plants in various countries, he was made responsible for flour milling in Egypt, uh, followed by Italy. Uh, back at his headquarters in Switzerland, he took over the management of the Grain Milling Training Centre and later headed Bula's worldwide grain milling activities. In 2050, 15, he took over the management of the African Milling School in Nairobi, Kenya, where he also taught on technology and quality control. Last year, he returned to Switzerland and is now taking care of specific milling groups and projects for the company. Last month, that's March, he was inducted into the Milling Hall of Fame in recognition of the work he has done throughout his career but in particular for the support he has given Millers uh, through his commitment to training. It's great pleasure to welcome Martin Schlowry to the Rongo Rongo video, uh, video um, studio, excuse me. Thank you very much. Welcome, Martin. Good morning, Roger. <laughs> I'm glad to be on a virtual meeting with you. Good morning to everybody. Yes, uh, well, it's uh, a, a very fine morning uh, for us. Uh, people obviously will be seeing this at various times of the day, but yeah, welcome. Um, we we have just, oh, I have just mentioned, and you were just inducted into the Milling Hall of Fame last month. And that's quite a, an accolade, I, I would imagine. Oh, I was, uh, got surprised with this award. And of course, I'm honored and delighted to be inducted into the Milling Hall of Fame. It is a very special place and really I'm very, very delighted. About yeah, it. well, it's much deserved. And what I think uh, our viewers would be interested in, Martin, is, you know, some of your views on milling. I know a lot of it centers around training, but um, what, what do you see as the, after all this experience, 40 years experience uh, and the travel uh, to different commissioning mills in different countries, etc., all over the world, I mean, how do you see the future of milling? What, what are the challenges or the main changes that you see occurring? If we talk about the challenges, we have a quick look back and going to have an outlook. Challenges are, I see three topics, mainly efficiency. Uh, a miller needs to process grain into flour. He needs to do it efficiently. That's on one side, the yield, the flour extraction, but it's the cost in operation. That has and will be in future an uh, ongoing challenge for every miller. Mm. Secondly, it uh, is food safety. What is now on topic of every miller is the food safety. We are producing food. Mm. Food means also responsibility towards the consumer. So there is no way to get over the food safety, but it needs the processes, it needs the equipment, and it needs the understanding of every miller. And, and Last but not least, the market as a miller needs to produce the specific flour, the flour which finds a market and for him he gets his added value. Mm. Well, I mean, those are very critical points, obviously, uh, from a miller's point of view, but he's relying on technology that companies like Bula and others uh, provide to achieve that. Um, do, do you see the significance of the Internet of Things, for example, playing a significant role in the industry uh, as we go forward? 
That's a very good question. But so, IoT is part of our life. If we use a smartphone, if we drive a car, we are doing, uh, we understand, we get data for what we are doing. Now, what means that for a miller? A miller also needs more data to decide to operate his plan at the best performance. Mm. So the data will help him to correct. Secondly, it will help him to keep the plan on a 24 7 operation at the best level. At the consistency 24 7 can only be done if there are online IoT. Mm. And last but not least, safety in the operation. The operation and health and safety can be in future assured thanks IoT. If we measure vibration, temperature, all these risky uh, <clears throat> conditions in a plant, it will help also for the operational safety. Yeah, I think you, I mean, we don't really understand yet the full impact that the Internet of Things will have on us with big data, etc., coming uh, through to, to our machines and operations, etc., and assessments. Uh, but do you think the role of the miller will change as a result of that? You know, will, will millers have to be skilled in a, in a different technology, as it were? And, and what would that mean for training? The millers in the past were mainly focusing on the operation. Keep the plant running at the best performance. <clears throat> this part will remain. But what will be more in future, it's a mix of operation, but also taking care, being responsible for the product the miller is producing. That means a miller needs a better understanding on the raw material and on the finished product. That means his training must be complemented with brain science and quality control. A mill can influence the end product. A mill can influence the property of flour. And only the best miller can achieve the best flour out of a grain, which at the end of the day is definitely a benefit for every company. So training is key. Training will be even more important if a miller wants to be the top provider, top supplier of flour for specific companies. Mm. And do, do you think, just as a side question, do you, do you think there's enough training uh, facilities out there for millers at the moment, or are we are we still building our training uh, uh, um, institutes or training schools, training uh, services? This is not equal around the world. We have to say that in some countries, governments take care for the middle training. And in those countries, it's mainly called also the apprenticeship, which is the base, that the starting point for every miller. Training is, training facilities are available. In other countries, it's more in the hands of the millers, of the milling associations or of private companies to build up training facilities. And if such training facilities are available, it still depends now on the miller. How important for his company he feels is to train his miller. But mm. let's say, yes, there are training facilities, but maybe there will not be sufficient for the future. And what will be more, the challenge is also uh, the languages. We don't have training in all the languages that reduces accessibility to people which may not be trained in different languages and that means also training is not available for all the people so mm -hmm. here there must be a next level of building facilities in regions where training is not yet available mm. very very interesting and a great observation um, coming back to one of your earlier points about food safety I mean, we talk about food safety, we, you've talked about cost of production, 
Um, and we're also, as an industry, talking about the reduced impact that we have on, on the environment or on resources. Um, and and we, we kind of ignore, at the moment, the health aspects of uh, what the Miller, uh, of the food the Miller produces. So, you know, talk me around the subject of sort of the impact on the environment and maybe, maybe health, the future offering that, that Miller's Mill products have towards human health. We're all interested in ensuring we have better nutrition and uh, uh, better food safety. So what are your comments around that subject? If you look at the value chain from grain to flour, the miller is exactly between. So the miller converts a raw material, which is not yet called food, into food. Mm. And when it, it is food, it, is, it has to comply with all the food safety uh, regulations. So that means millers are key in producing a healthy and safe food. The flour is converted into bread, pasta, pastry, whatever mm. uh, products, uh, carbohydrates, which we consume as a consumer. So food safety is a must for a miller. It is definitely the awareness has to be in a company that the processes must be introduced and applied for producing a safe food. Hmm. Okay, and um, I was just wondering around uh, food fortification. Any any view on f uh, flour fortification? I mean, food fortification is an issue that's being talked about. We talk about it in our magazine, uh, but flour in particular. And I'm thinking of um, fluoric acid, for instance. I mean, do you have any views? Having travelled in uh, various countries, uh, been involved in the flour milling industry in those countries. Etc. Do you have a view around around the subject of fortification? Definitely, fortification it is not new. It started back even after Second World War. Uh, countries introduced fortification. Maybe it was not always on the flour. It was on different staple. Even in Europe, in many countries, it's on salt any type of fortification which is a deficit in the daily food. Mm. Now, we know in some countries the food is not well balanced. We consume too much carbohydrates, but, but maybe lack of protein, but lack also of minerals, vitamins, and some very specific uh, micronutrients uh, needed for the body. So in these cases, governments have the prime interest to introduce this type of fortification. Many things have happened, and many countries are now adopted to this flower fortification, and it's in the hands of the millers to seriously implement it. It's not only a must, it's an obligation, but it's also a personal commitment as a miller to produce a food which assures also a healthy, which complies with a healthy aspect for the consumer. Well, that's that's a very powerful message there, uh, Martin. And uh, I hope millers take this on board. Um, I mean, it's not often that millers uh, travel as widely as you and, and have so much experience. So listening to what you've just said, I think that it's a very strong case that we should uh, engage with governments uh, over the usefulness of uh, improving health through the possibility of uh, flower fortification. But thank you very much for those comments. Um, and, and finally, uh, looking forward, uh, you know, we know the world's going to increase to something like nine and a half billion people by 2050. Uh, do you think milling, flour milling, grain, uh, milling of grains, Etc. Do you think the industry is up to meeting that challenge in terms of providing sufficient uh, food for a start, making sure that it's safe and making sure that it's affordable uh, for all? Do you think the milling industry is up to the challenge? Wow, well, <laughs> that's an interesting <laughs> question. Looking in this uh, 
in the future how the globe how the world population develops mm -hmm. i can see three things first of all as mentioned the miller is in between of the grain producer and the consumer so what is available if the grain is available yes i can say millers can produce sufficient uh, flour for the demand to comply with the demand grain is available now whether it's in future available depends on maybe two factors one is is that grain affordable for every budget and secondly is the grain in our case wheat not being replaced by other grain so that means we are always in competition between carbohydrates and protein how much grain is used to feed animals to produce the protein so that will be a race have we enough wheat maybe maize in some countries for human consumption or is it just diverted to animal nutrition now how can we avoid that too much grain is used as feed maybe if we use more protein if we consume more protein from uh, plants which is definitely a trend talking about pulses talking about the planted food soya yeah. converted into uh, protein for human consumption so that trend must go on and definitely must grow in the future so the consumption of protein is complement complemented by planted protein yeah we have another challenge is definitely the environment the, the climate conditions energy so that will be a never-ending development of the suppliers to develop technology saving energy saving resources so that will be the three factors definitely grain must be available grain should not compete and lose against the protein and of course the resources like energy must be available mm. and with those three factors in place millers can meet the challenge of a growing world population by 2050. Well, that's that's very good to hear, uh, Martin. And uh, you know, thank you for for being so open and uh, forthright about these topics. Um, I think it's it's a great uh, accolade to yourself and to the industry and to your company that you have achieved what you have in your working life, and that um, you know you have been inducted into the Milling Hall of Fame. Congratulations again on achieving that, and. Uh, all the best for the future. And I, I hope uh, in the future we can have you back on uh, the Rongo Rongo Live studio. But in the meantime, thank you for your comments today. Thank you, Otto.